Hello and welcome to the CVAT Academy. You are watching a video from our new training course on data annotation in CVAT. In this episode, we will cover annotation accuracy, completeness, consistency, manual quality assurance tactics, and useful analytics and statistics. When we talk about annotation quality, we mean that the annotation must fully comply with the project requirements specified in the specification. That is, all images must be annotated and all required objects annotated with the level of accuracy specified in the requirements. If the task involves medium accuracy annotation, there are usually no major problems. In such cases, objects can be outlined not strictly along the contour, but including a bit more background. This speeds up the process and makes it easier, so difficulties are generally minimal. However, when it comes to maximum accuracy, down to the pixel level, difficulties arise. Annotators often face problems, especially if they are not fully familiar with the basic functions of the tool. For example, image navigation. In pixel level annotation, it is important to see every single pixel. Drawing a bounding box without zooming, especially for objects in the mid or far plane, may initially seem correct. But once the image is zoomed in, note that this is done using the mouse wheel. Offsets or even cropped parts of the object become visible. In this case, such bounding boxes will need additional correction. The same applies when annotating with a polygon. Without zooming, inaccuracies are easily introduced and important object details may be missed. At the same time, if we annotate the same object with zoom, we will spend slightly more time, but the quality of the annotation will significantly improve. There is another point with bounding boxes. Some objects can be large and have a complex shape. In such cases, it is difficult to draw the box correctly on the first attempt, even when using the red guidelines from the cursor. If you try to zoom in to refine the boundaries, part of the object may not fit on the screen. In such cases, it is better to use the four-point method. We specify the extreme points of the object along four planes, and the bounding box is built automatically. This method is often more convenient and allows good quality on the first attempt, especially because zooming can be fully utilized. Many beginners in the brush tool limit themselves to using only the brush. Yes, the brush can quickly create rough annotation, but making truly precise annotations with it is very difficult and time-consuming, especially for objects with complex shapes. It is much more efficient in the brush tool to switch to polygon mode. It allows precise outlining of boundaries and significantly saves time. Another point, in pixel level annotation, it is sometimes critical to see every pixel, especially if the image quality is not very high or the objects are small. In such cases, it is better to disable the smooth image option, which smooths the image. Then the pixels are displayed without blur, and the object boundaries can be determined as accurately as possible. Annotation quality is determined not only by the accuracy of the shapes describing objects, it also includes the completeness of the annotation and the consistency of label and attribute usage. Even if objects are outlined very precisely, missing objects or entire frames, incorrectly set attribute values, wrong labels, or incorrect shapes for annotation. All of these reduce the overall quality. In other words, high geometric accuracy loses its meaning if other annotation rules are violated. Sometimes an annotator accidentally or intentionally skips annotating certain frames. An annotation task can contain hundreds of frames, and finding a single unannotated frame may take time. CVOT provides a convenient way to quickly find frames that are not yet annotated. You can switch the standard frame navigation mode to the empty frames only mode. This way you immediately see all images without annotations and can process them. If it is important to ensure that all objects have the correct labels, the filter comes to the rescue. Simply enable filtering by label name and only objects with that label will remain on the screen. This is a simple but very effective verification method. It helps prevent naming errors. It is especially convenient to use the filter when many objects with different labels are present on the frames. 
By displaying only the required label, we can focus on checking one type of object and more quickly ensure that the annotation is correct. Additionally, with an active filter, it is possible to switch immediately between frames containing objects that match the filter conditions. This can be done either using keyboard arrows or through the player by selecting the frame switching by filter mode. This method significantly speeds up validation, particularly for rare objects that appear only a few times in a task. Another tool that aids validation is the attribute annotation mode. It allows not only annotating object attributes, but also focusing on one object at a time, switching between them with a single key. This is excellent for checking label correctness on an image in combination with the filter. To start, set the filter by label name and enter attribute annotation mode. You immediately focus on the first object. Reminder, you can adjust the zoom on the active object via settings. Press F2 and set the desired value in the attribute annotation mode, zoom margin field. The smaller the number, the larger the object appears on the screen. If the shape completely covers the object and it is difficult to distinguish, you can remove the fill by setting selected opacity to zero. In this case, the shape outline remains, but the interior becomes transparent, making the object easier to see. Optionally, a higher opacity can be set so that neighboring objects do not visually interfere, allowing faster focus on the desired object. Now check all objects on the frame. To move to the next object, press tab or the arrow in the interface. Continue checking objects for correct labels. If you see an object with the wrong label, it can be quickly corrected right in this mode. Click the label field and select the correct value from the list. Pay attention to the numbers in square brackets. This shows the current object number and the total number of objects in the frame. When you reach the last object and press tab again, you return to the first object and counting starts over. Keep track to avoid checking objects twice. Some projects have additional requirements, often related to object sizes. If it is important that no annotated objects are smaller than, for example, 20 pixels in height, the annotator can control this in three ways. If bounding boxes are used, the object size is immediately visible. This allows quick determination of whether to continue annotating the object. Using a grid. Activate it by clicking the arrow at the bottom, then under Image Grid, check the box and set the desired value in the size field. If the task requires ignoring objects smaller than 20 pixels, set the value to 20. This immediately shows objects smaller than one grid cell, which are then ignored. Checking already annotated objects for size consistency. In the filter, set a rule for the height parameter, specifying height less than 20 pixels. This shows all objects below 20 pixels in height. Besides quickly finding objects of interest, they can be removed from the annotation using Actions. Open the menu and select Run Actions. In Select Action, choose Remove Filtered Shapes, specify which frames to remove them from, in this case all frames, and click Run. All objects that match the filter will be deleted. This method allows deleting objects not only based on size, but on any parameters and rules available in the filters. Attributes are also an important part of annotation. If an annotator skips setting attribute values, the annotation may be considered incomplete, lowering its quality. When setting attributes for objects, the default value can be set to undefined. Click it to make it the default. It will be highlighted in blue. Now, all new objects will have default empty attribute values, visually indicating unset attributes and allowing them to be found using filters. That is, we can set undefined as a filter value for an attribute and use it to find all objects without annotated attributes. Let's discuss filters further.
Annotation tasks can have frames heavily loaded with annotations. Hundreds of objects may appear on one frame. The main problem with such frames is visual noise. Not only are there many objects, but they also overlap. For example, different annotated objects with different labels may overlap on a single object. It can be hard to understand which object was annotated where. The solution is simple. Annotate each label sequentially, adding it to the filter so that only it is displayed. This excludes other labels, reducing visual noise. That is, add the label name to the filter, annotate it on this frame, then change the label and annotate it. Previously annotated objects will not interfere. Do not forget about appearance settings. If working with one label and many overlapping objects exist, switch color by to instance to display each object in different colors. This helps visually distinguish boundaries between objects. Finally, let's look at annotation statistics. To open it within a task, click the Info button. In this statistics panel, you can see not just how many objects an annotator has labeled, but also the distribution of objects by labels, tools, and annotation mode, shape, or track. Thus, statistics can help identify anomalies in annotations. Since finding all errors visually is sometimes difficult, statistics provide a numerical perspective. Statistics can also be viewed in analytics. Let's make a request to display the analytics. Navigate to the Annotations tab. Depending on the type of task, standard detection or video tracking, separate statistics are available. In our case, it is detection. Here, a convenient table can be sorted by the number of objects annotated in the task, giving insight into label distribution. For example, if a label usually has few objects in a task, but in one task it suddenly has many, it signals that this label should be checked for correctness. The annotator may have used the wrong label. Analytics also show the distribution of objects by shape type. Currently, all objects are annotated with bounding boxes. Return to the task and annotate one object, using, for example, a polygon. Save the task and refresh the analytics. You will see one object annotated with a polygon, a clear indicator of annotation error. Errors related to incorrect shape selection by annotators can be prevented in advance. Each label can be assigned a fixed shape type. By default, any is used, allowing any shape for the label, but this increases the probability of error. The optimal solution is to pre-assign specific shapes to labels to avoid such errors. Annotation statistics can be viewed not only at the job level, but also at the task and project levels. That is, in a project, you can access analytics at the project level to see overall annotation statistics across all tasks. Thus, annotation quality is determined by a combination of factors, shape accuracy, completeness of annotation, correct choice of labels and attributes, and compliance with all additional project requirements. CVOT provides annotators with a wide range of tools to maintain high quality, from filters and statistics to automated checks and shape selection restrictions. Mastering these features reduces the risk of errors and makes the annotation process more efficient. A properly organized workflow results in datasets that are truly useful for model training and ensure reliable results in real-world tasks.